Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 26 of the Ortho Eval Pal podcast. I am your host, Paul Marquis, and today do I have something fun for you. We're going to do a little podcast challenge, okay? So let me just give you a little description of how the show is going to go today. I was, um, I was recently talking to a patient, and this is where I came up with the idea. The patient said to me, that he'd been having some shoulder problems for a while now, especially since, you know, it's been about six months he's been having shoulder pain. He states that he was golfing, caught a divot uh, with his golf club, and I'm not a big golfer, so you'll have to just envision this into your head, okay? So the patient comes to me and after a couple visits, continues to complain of posterior shoulder pain, and he demonstrates to me the position that he golfs in, which is when he pulls the arm back and pulls the club back, he looks over his left shoulder and he says, that's exactly where the pain starts to bother me. And when he swings through, he doesn't have as much discomfort. So we kind of analyze that a little bit and I put him into that position again and I asked him to change his neck position and to turn to the right instead of turn to the left when getting into that position and notice that his pain went away in the posterior aspect of the shoulder. So it made me think a little bit, you know, are we asking the right questions with our patients and are we listening to them well enough? So today's podcast is going to be about listening to your patient. So I'm going to throw a little challenge out there today. I'm going to describe a recent patient. It's not this last one that we were talking about, but another patient. I'm going to describe the history of this patient. And I want you to listen carefully. I'm going to talk to you about some of the special tests that I did. And I want to see if you can figure out what the patient has just by listening to me on this podcast without even putting your hands on or seeing this patient. Okay? So this is really going to require you to to buckle down, listen very carefully, and try to piece this all together. And oftentimes we can diagnose patients and evaluate them without even putting a hand on them if you listen to their, their story. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go through history, give you some objective findings that I found, and I want you to piece this together in your head, and come up with a diagnosis. What I'm gonna do after I give you all this information, I'm gonna do a little pause and give you a, a little homemade commercial that I'm putting together myself. And I'm gonna give you that time to either finish up the podcast and say, you know what? I'm gonna to go to orthoevalpal.com, put in my comments or ask more questions about this patient in our get in touch page, or which, and this will be in our, this will be in the show notes also. So you can just click on that and go to the get in touch page and ask me some more questions. If you want, you can put your diagnosis in there also, or you can wait till I'm done this commercial and I will talk about what I suspect is going on with the patient. Now I'm suspecting that you're all going to just listen through to get the answer to this, but some of you may say, you know what, I want to try to figure this out myself. You may want to listen to it again, write some notes down um, and ask some questions. And that's really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for you to become a better diagnostician and to break things down a little bit better. Okay. So are y'all ready? We're going to get started right now. So this 14 year old male comes in with his uncle. Uh, uncle uh, spends a lot of time with him and they report to me that when he was 11 years old, three years ago, he fell down skiing. Now, let me precede this with how this patient even got to my office. So he's in gym class or phys ed as some folks would call it. And his phys ed teacher, who I know really well, says there's something wrong with his weightlifting skills. Like he can't do a military press very well. He can't do a push up very well. It looks kind of awkward. He tried doing some bench pressing. That was really awkward. And he's a great little athlete, but has a hard time with his left hand, which is the troublesome side. When he dribbles the ball, he has a hard time controlling it with his left side. Right side's perfectly fine. This young man doesn't have a lot of pain, but he has some dysfunction and he wants to become a more aggressive athlete. And so he asks our athletic trainer to take a look at this young man. And uh, as he does, uh, finds that he has a little clicking and clunking in his shoulder when he puts the patient up into the pitching position. So he refers the patient over to him and he comes uh, in the afternoon to see me and uh, we do an evaluation and this is what we find. So when we asked when this started, he said it happened when he was 11 years old. He was downhill skiing, went up onto one of those pipes that you can slide down. Apparently he wiped off of that and uh, had some severe discomfort in his left shoulder. His uncle at the time was a ski patrol uh, and, uh, and told him, don't move. 
But of course, the young man tried to get up off of the, the snow, up off the ground. And as he moved his arm, um, it appeared to have um, reduced itself. So apparently it was dislocated at what appeared to be inferiorly. The next day, they took the young man to the emergency room. He had x-rays done. Okay. The x-rays were negative. And this young man has not seen a provider since then. So three years later, he's had no follow-up on the shoulder until yesterday when it was recognized that this young man had some abnormal movement patterns in his arm and some unusual weakness. So he comes in, he doesn't complain of any pain, no significant problems with that. Um, his big complaint is that he has difficulty controlling a basketball and has difficulty with weightlifting activities, especially overhead activities or anything that he pulls toward his body with a kind of an internally rotated position, okay? He denies any paresthesias throughout the upper extremity. Nothing unusual as far as headaches or any other medical history whatsoever here to be concerned with. You take a look at this kid. He has um, good stature. He's in good health. He's, uh, you know, not overweight. He has no atrophy in the shoulder on the left side, no atrophy around the scapular region. He has a good active range of motion. His shoulder flexion, abduction, external rotation are about 95% of normal with just very little abnormal motion, kind of like you'd see with the typical asymmetry in the in a person who doesn't have any shoulder issues. Okay. Um, so we do notice though, when he tries to internally rotate the arm that he can only reach the upper glute on the left side. He has a little bit of difficulty getting there. Other than that, all of the motions, the good scapular motion looks good. No real problems. So I proceed with a neurologic exam. I do deep tendon reflexes for C5, C6, C7. They're not hyperreflexive. They're equal on both sides. Sensation is equal throughout the upper extremities. And he has no distal weakness um, below the elbow. So elbow flexion, extension, supination, pronation, wrist, finger, um, muscle groups are all within normal limits. Now, I'm going to get into uh, passive range of motion. That was well within normal limits in all positions, including that internal rotation that he had a hard time with actively. Okay. Manual muscle testing of the shoulder. Flexion is about uh, four to four plus over five. Shoulder abduction is four to four plus over five. So there's just a little um, weakness there. And he hikes the shoulder a little bit when I give him some resistance, but shows a good muscle definition throughout the shoulder. External rotation is at least four plus over five. Internal rotation, interestingly, with his elbow next to his side is maximum three over five, if not a little bit weaker than that. So no problem with shoulder shrugging. Cervical spine range of motion is within normal limits. So I'm going to get into some special tests now, okay? So I'm going to start with the cervical spine. I did some cervical spine um, compression. That was negative. Sperling's test of the neck was negative. Um, special tests of the shoulder included the apprehension sign, which is negative. The relocation test, which is negative. And we've just gone over a lot of these special tests. And I have um, a bunch of uh, special tests uh, on our YouTube channel. And that will be included in the show notes here. So you can take a look at all of these if you're not familiar with them. He has a positive O'Brien sign. Not very painful, but very weak. Um, and some discomfort posteriorly. So he has more pain with the palm up than he does with the thumb down when he's in the O'Brien position. He has a positive clunk test, and this is a very definitive clunk when I put him through this test, um, and that was painful when I did that also. He had a negative empty can test for pain, but he was a little bit weak there. He had a definitive positive liftoff test. He could put his hand on his left buttock, but he could not lift it off of his buttock. So the first thing I did is I lifted his hand off, to see if he could even get into that position, which he could, but he couldn't hold it in the air. It flopped right back to his buttock. Okay. Then I did a bear hug test and that was positive. I did a belly press test and that was positive. And so I'm um, trying to think of some of the other tests that we did. He had a negative drop arm test. He had uh, no signs of a bicep dysfunction whatsoever. He had a negative Jurgensen's and he had a negative speeds test. He had a negative Luddington's. 
No obvious signs of a bicep rupture. His AC joint was fine. He had negative uh, cross body adduction test. The O'Brien active compression test was also negative. All right. So the positive tests are a lift off test, bear hug, belly press. He had a positive clunk test, positive O'Brien sign. Okay. So with that in mind, we're going to take a little break. I'm going to talk about something else. In that time, you can stop the podcast or you can continue listening for what I believe is the diagnosis toward the end. Um, this young man will have some special testing coming up soon and we're going to have uh, all of the answers. But um, with that in mind, we're going to take a little break. So this is with full disclosure. Uh, I have come up with a new device. It's called the Easy Slant. It's a portable, durable, and adjustable slant board to help stretch your calf muscle out better. Now, the reason I developed this board is because uh, I was frustrated with all of these years of, of treating foot and ankle dysfunction and having difficulty with patients doing the correct type of stretching, which is stretching on a slant board. Hanging off of a step is not really good for the metatarsals. It's stressful to the fascia. I've actually had people strain their calves doing it, and um, I find it to be very counterproductive. So I don't really like to do that stretch. I've always been a big advocate of slant board stretching, but people don't stretch them, stretch their calves often enough. And so I wanted to develop something that was more portable. And so I developed the Easy Slant. The Easy Slant is foldable. It's 12 inches by six inches by three quarters of an inch high. It has four adjustable um, heights to it. It is made out of a high grade aluminum, super solid. I actually parked my son's car on it and it didn't budge. We uh, placed uh, about 750 pounds on it in the clinic. We ran out of uh, weights. Uh, we probably could have done uh, more than that and it held it up beautifully. So this portable slant board is awesome and it's, uh, it's very, very strong, very portable. You can put it away. You can bring it with you and um, take it to the field, take it to the court, and um, you can take it to work with you. It's a great little device. We have many people using it now. Uh, we have some folks in the major leagues using it uh, on a regular basis and loves it. We have strength and conditioning folks using them. PT clinics are utilizing them. Uh, we even have some folks in CrossFit who like to take it to competitions with them. And it's very easy. You slide it in your backpack. You're ready to roll. And um, great little device. So if you want some more information on the Easy Slant, go to www.easyslant.com. Take a look at our device and uh, and take a look at uh, all of the great um, aspects of it and um, uh, feel free to ask any questions or um, get in touch with me about that. So for those of you who hung out to, to wait for the answer to this, uh, this is my suspicion with this patient. Okay, First of all, he had an episode where he may have had a dislocation type of event. So we need to be thinking of a couple of things. Did he strain some soft tissue? Did he tear his rotator cuff? Um, did he tear his subscapularis? Because he has a positive liftoff test. He has a positive bear hug and he has a positive belly press. And I mean, it's impressively weak. Very, very weak. So we have to be thinking that, number one, either he tore his subscapularis, which is extremely, extremely rare in someone his age. Now, this would be the first time I've ever seen it in somebody his age. Usually this occurs in people who are 50 years old and older. Um, to be honest with you, a majority of those patients have been male and they've done something pretty aggressive. It's been a pretty big fall um, that has torn that subscapularis and usually they've had a degraded cuff to cause that. So I, I, I'm somewhat suspicious that he's torn his subscapularis, but I think that we need to be looking in a different direction here. I'm thinking that he probably has a subscapular nerve injury, probably severed the subscapular nerve and uh, caused some significant damage. Now it's been three years. There's probably nothing we can do about that if it is a nerve injury. But the other thing we need to be thinking about is this significant clunking he has in his shoulder. He has a positive clunk test um, and he has significant weakness with the O'Brien test and some posterior and deep shoulder discomfort with the O'Brien test. So I'm suspicious that he's either damaged his subscapular nerve or tore his subscapularis and possibly also sustained a slap lesion um, to his shoulder. He does not have any anterior instability, but he does have some positive signs that could be consistent with a slap tear. So he's had no diagnostic testing. At this point, this young man needs an, an arthrogram, an MR arthrogram of his shoulder. And if that comes back negative, 
for any tearing uh, of the subscapularis or any other soft tissue structures in his shoulder, he then should have an EMG study um, to help identify uh, if it is only the subscapular nerve or the, if the thoracodorsal is involved in that. Uh, we did test the uh, the lats and the teres major. Those seem to be fine. So I, I think we're looking at more of an isolated um, upper subscapular nerve. So I hope you had fun with this. Um, I don't even know what the diagnosis is completely with this patient. We've seen folks with a very similar situation in the past. This is my suspicion. But I think the more important thing here is that we look at how do we manage this particular situation? I think that getting to orthopedics is important. I think getting an MR arthrogram is important. And the reason we want to do the MR arthrogram is because the uh, arthrogram will be a little more uh, sensitive to a labral issue. And uh, the uh, rotator cuff can also be assessed. And then I think an EMG after that is going to be the appropriate way to go. And uh, and then with more information, with more diagnostic imaging and testing, I think we'll have a much better chance of uh, getting this patient in the right direction and hopefully decrease his risk of having some long-term functional problems. Now, if he was a couch potato, I think it would be a different story. He wouldn't use that arm too functionally. But this young man wants to be an athlete. He wants to work hard out there. He loves to play basketball and play other sports. And uh, we want to allow him uh, as active a quality of life as we can get him. And I think this is the direction we should head in. So please, folks, send over your comments. Um, I really appreciate all the comments you've been giving me, especially on our YouTube page. For those of you who uh, actually watch our uh, podcast on YouTube, uh, thanks for the comments and uh, the feedback has been awesome. Um, really appreciate all of that. Please take the time to go over to Apple uh, and iTunes and please give us a rating and a review in regards to our uh, podcasting. I would love any comments or constructive criticism. It just helps us to make this better. Uh, I've been so excited about this. I'm really considering doing um, more podcasts per week, maybe uh, getting a couple in a week instead of every Tuesday. So give me feedback on that and uh, maybe that'll help uh, drive us in a certain direction. Uh, please make sure you check out our uh, website at uh, orthovalpal.com and uh, check out our YouTube channel and everything else we have connected with that. Again, folks, thanks uh, for being there with us. I really appreciate you listening and um, I hope you're having as much fun with this as I am. Take care.